Okay, so let's say we're designing for snow loads. Uh, two different formulas I have here. Assuming the roof is flat, I've got a P sub F, F for flat, uh, 0.7 times C sub E times C sub T times I sub S times P sub G. I'll call that equation 1. If it's a sloped roof, uh, we're assuming that some of the snow slides off. So I've got P sub S is equal to C sub S times P sub F, uh, the P sub F from equation 1. So uh, I want to do an example involving these formulas. Okay, so for example, a gabled frame building near Cleveland, Ohio, in a wind-protected rural environment, uh, and I'll consider that it's not essential. So here you have an elevation view of the building. So I have to find what all those different coefficients are, the C sub E, C sub T, etc., uh, and then stick them into the formula. So first I'll calculate the snow load assuming that we have a flat roof. Uh, remember that we don't actually have a flat roof, but I'm going to assume that it is for a moment. So I use uh, what I called equation 1 for that. P sub F is equal to 0.7 C sub E, C sub T, I sub S, P sub G. The exposure factor, uh, that's C sub E, 0.8 if it's exposed, 1.2 if it's protected. Uh, in the directions here, I think that I said that it would be uh, wind protected or rural environment. So I'll use 1.2. Use the 1.2. Uh, for temperature, 1 if it's heated, 1.2 if it's unheated. Uh, in this case, I'll assume it's heated. I'll assume that it's a heated structure, uh, meaning that the snow on the roof is uh, more likely to, to melt. And then the importance factor. I sub S, uh, 0.8 if it's unimportant, uh, for example, a uh, junk storage, and it's a 1.2 if it's important, for example, a medical facility like a hospital or a police station or fire station. So for us, I'll assume that it's a 1.0. I usually will assume 1.0 for a general purpose building. So I'll say 1.0 for this particular example. And then lastly, the ground load. Uh, that depends on the geography, where you are in the country, or even where you are locally. If it's uh, up high in the mountains, uh, it might be a special case, but uh, for Cleveland, I'll assume that P sub G is 20 pounds per square foot. Uh, so that depends on uh, the locality. Okay, so I stick everything into the formula. P sub F is 0.7 times C sub E times C sub T times I sub S times P sub G. And that's 16.8 uh, pounds per square foot. Um, that would be assuming a flat roof, but it's actually not flat, it's sloped. Remember the original drawing, uh, 20 degree slope. Okay, so I say use equation 2 since it's sloped. So P sub S is C sub S times P sub F. Uh, the C sub S in this case would be 1.0. 1 1.0 uh, 1 is actually the maximum value that would be allowable for that particular coefficient. Uh, if, for example, the roof were to have a 60 degree slope, then C sub S would be less than one. You see, when I use C sub S, I'm actually, uh, I'm actually multiplying that by the load that uh, assumed a flat roof. So if C sub S were smaller than one, then the snow load would be less than that for a flat roof. So in this case, uh, if I've only got a 20 degree slope, then I really can't uh, take much credit. I can't really assume that much of the snow is going to slide off. Uh, however, as I said a moment ago, for a, for a steep roof, uh, 30 degrees is uh, usually a good standard. If it's steeper than 30 degrees, then I can reduce that C sub S to less than 1, and uh, thereby I would reduce to P sub S. Uh, also, it's a warm roof. It's a heated building, so I can take that into consideration. Okay, so P sub S is equal to 1.0 times 16.8. Okay, so what I'm getting is my snow load, 16.8 pounds per square foot. Uh, so that's what I had better design for.